Hi, in this tutorial with Apex Clothing, we're going to go over how to do LODs with our flag asset. We're going to use 3DS Max 2012 and Unreal Engine 3. The first thing that we want to do is do an overview of our current flag asset. We're going to first look at the higher resolution flag, which is at about 2700 verts, and then we're going to take notice of the bone order that's in the skinning envelope. It's important that the bones are added in the same order to each asset. Then we've got our medium resolution flag with about 700 verts. And again, the bones are added in the same order. And then our low resolution flag, which has about 190 verts. And it's also important to note that when building your LODs, the edges from the low resolution mesh should line up with the medium and the high resolution mesh. And then the medium resolution mesh should line up, should have its edges line up with the high resolution mesh. You don't need to be exact, but the closer you are, the better the blending will be between the LODs. The next section is less about clothing and more of a review about how to do a LOD skeletal mesh that you'll use for Unreal 3. So what we have here is our three flag assets that have just been put in this single group. We call the group flag underscore LOD. Then we go over to our utility panel and under the utilities rollout we click more and we get the level of detail. Now it's automatically added in our three meshes that were part of that group. The highest density mesh is considered LOD1 and then the lowest density is considered LOD3. If we use the display in the viewports checkbox then we can get feedback of how these LODs are, are going to cycle once they're in Unreal 3. If we need to go back and edit any of these meshes, all we have to do is go up to the group menu item and open the group. Now in this case, we don't need to do any edits, so we'll close the group, cycle through our LODs one more time just to check, and now we can export our skeletal mesh. So we go to the main menu, export, select FBX as our file format, and we're going to use the preset Autodesk Media and Entertainment. The only thing that we need to change is to make sure that the up axis is Z so that it matches Unreal 3. And then we need to make sure that the animation checkbox is on so that the skinning envelopes are included in the export. We'll then use the resulting FBX file in the later section of this tutorial. Now in this section, we're going to go ahead and set up our initial cloth on the high resolution mesh. Also will be used for LOD01. So go ahead and hide your low and medium resolution mesh. And then you're going to go to your physics toolbar and add a clothing modifier. Set your channel to max distance and the channel value to 200 and just flood the, flood the mesh with a value of 200. Now when you play the simulation, you'll see that the, the flag definitely has enough movement. So now what we need to do is tone back the corners a little bit so that they stay attached to the flagpole. So now what we're going to do is use a value of zero max distance to paint the lower left corner of the flag and then the upper left corner of the flag. And this is going to pin these areas to the flagpole or where they are skinned. Now when we play the simulation, we'll see the flag has this heavy stretchy look, but it is staying pinned where we wanted. So now we need to set some values on the physical material. We'll set gravity scale to 0.2, friction to 0.05, bendiness and sheariness to 0, dampening to 0.05. And since this is a pretty, pretty dense cloth, we're going to go ahead and use anti-stretch. And we're going to use a value of 1.0. Now when we play the simulation, we're not getting any stretching. Um, but it is going right through the flagpole, so we need to set up some collision. So we're going to go ahead and reset in the bind pose, select our flag, and then we're going to go up to the physics toolbar and create a kinematic ragdoll. I'm going to go ahead and move my helper up to the top of the object. And under the general attributes, I'm going to go ahead and add all eight flagpole bones to the ragdoll. Now, as you can see here, in using max bones, um, a capsule and a convex collision shape was created. 
and this is because the fin of a max bone is actually a separate object so it's created so we're going to go ahead and move that extra shape so we're just left with a capsule and now since we've gone over ragdolls before in previous tutorials we're going to go ahead and load our final ragdoll and now we can go ahead and play the simulation and you can see here that the flag is now colliding with the flagpole however we can still make a few improvements here the first thing we're going to do is change the simulation thickness to a value of three and what this is going to do is tell the cloth to collide with the capsules three units off of the surface of the capsule this gives us a little bit more of a uh, of a buffer zone for collision and now to increase the thing to enhance the behavior even more since again since this is high resolution we can set our self collision at two this is going to give us a better behavior and we arrived at a self collision thickness of two because if we look down in our statistics panel we can see that the max edge length is 1.97 and the average edge length is 1.58 so we want to be in about that ballpark to get the best self collision behavior and at the lowest cost now that we have our clothing set up all we need to do is add the LODs so what we're going to do is go up to our layer manager and unhide the layers that contain the high, medium, and low resolution meshes. Now we're going to select the high resolution mesh that has the Apex clothing modifier. This is LOD1. At our level of detail rollout, we can use the pick add button to add the different meshes from the viewport. Sometimes it's convenient to hide and unhide different layers in order to get better picking. We can then use the arrows in the level of detail rollout to rearrange the LODs into their proper order. The next step is to paint max distance much in the same way we did on the high resolution mesh to the medium and low resolution meshes. We're first going to isolate the medium resolution mesh by hiding the high resolution and low resolution layers. We're going to use the same values, so we're going to flood at a value of 200 for max distance and then we're going to use zero to paint in the lower left corner and the upper left corner. Again, this will allow the flag to pin itself to the flagpole. Now that we've completed the medium resolution mesh, the only thing left is the low res. So we're going to hide this layer and then unhide the, the low resolution layer. We'll use the same values, a flood at 200, and then painting the corners, the lower left and upper left, at zero. And this again ensures that all three LOD levels will pin to the flagpole at the two quarters. Now that our max distance is painted, our behavioral attributes are all going to carry forward from LOD to LOD. So now what we'll do is we'll unhide all three of the layers. We'll select our high resolution flag mesh because it's the one that has the Apex clothing modifier on it. Then when we play the simulation, only one of these flags is going to simulate at a given time. If we look at our level of detail rollout, we can see that the flag LOD2 is highlighted. When we play the simulation, this is the one that will simulate. While the simulation is playing, we can click on the different LODs to change which LOD is simulating at any given time. So we'll change it to our high res or LOD1. Then we can switch it back to LOD2. And then finally, we can preview our LOD3. Now our flag is set up and it's ready to be exported to Unreal. Now we're ready to go ahead and export our asset. We're going to do this the same way that we've done before. We're going to select a PX project file format. We're going to give it a name such as flag underscore LOD. We're going to turn off FBX and export physics scene. Then we're going to use an APX file format just for the sake of iterating if we need to. We're going to turn off CTB and CTW. And then we're also going to include the collision holes.
Now we can go ahead and export our asset. And notice how just because we used LODs doesn't mean we needed to do anything different. Now we're in Unreal Engine 3 and you can see in our sample package that we've already got our skeletal mesh imported and we've got three flag materials and our flagpole material as well as an atom set if we want to use that. Now if we open the skeletal mesh in atom set viewer you can see that there's the flagpole mapped to ID 0 and then three flag materials and these are all mapped into the LODs so that when we change a uh, view distance that we have an obvious um, feedback mechanism for what things are changing when we're in the map. So now if we right click in some gray space we can import our clothing asset. And in this case it's an APX and we're going to go ahead and group that under Apex. Now we're going to open back up our skeletal mesh and connect our clothing asset to it. And in, in this case, uh, for the sake of a tutorial, we have one monitor, so we're going to take a moment to organize our, our screen a little bit. And then what we want to do is just select our Apex Clothing Asset. And then under the Clothing Asset Materials slots, we're just going to pipe that into ID 0. And you can see that our feedback would, would initially tell you that this is incorrect. And we just have to set up a few more things in order to get the proper feedback. So we want to go into the clothing LOD map and under clothing LOD info there's section information under each LOD. UE3 already knows about the, the three LODs that Apex has so we just need to tell it which material it's related to. And in this case it's material 1 which is the highest resolution base material for the cloth. And then we zoom in and out we can see that we're getting a smooth transition between simulation and that we are definitely getting these LOD changes based on the material overrides we put into the LOD info. So now at this point we can close down Atom Set Viewer and minimize the content browser. So let's see this in the context of a test map. We're going to use the morning lighting for a preset for our test map and we'll go back to the content browser select our flag and we're going to go add a few of these skeletal meshes throughout the map. And let's go ahead and put one on top of the box and then let's take a few few moments to just go ahead and move two of these a little bit over a little bit so we're a little more evenly spaced around the box. Now that we've got our map set up, the obvious next thing to do is go ahead and save it off. And now that we've got that saved, we can go ahead and play the map in Pi. And as soon as we jump in, we can see we see a blue flag turning to red and then a red flag turning to our white and green flag. So as we run around we can see the LODs changing, we can see the simulation blending to one another. And even if we get into positions where there's flags in different places we can see it at different LOD levels given different viewing angles. And to conclude this is how we add Apex Clothing LODs to a skeletal mesh in Unreal 3.